I like to share this practical meditation with you against the background of our readings. In our readings, the highest ideal is set for us Christians, how the first Christians live together in harmony. As our first reading put it, their hearts were united. I'm also sharing these thoughts with you in view of the fact that we have a beautiful statue, however broken it is, in our chapel. This is called the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I think Father Dane spotted it uh, in a fair somewhere. It's really beautiful. As mentioned, it is a practical meditation. I just wonder, we don't have to share it, if you have ever had a conflict with someone, or if you had a difficult person in your life, when you couldn't get rid of that pain and it's recurring. I don't know, I definitely, it happens to me occasionally. Our heart should belong to Jesus. As our illustration shows, there is a thorn around Jesus' heart. The human heart is a very sensitive organ. We should really, sh we should really uh, take, should care of our hearts, and not only of our hearts, but others. Because whenever something negative happens to a person, fear, anxiety, hurt, there is a grasp around our heart. It leaves a wound. When people get a heart attack, it is usually caused by, by the hurt caused by others or by the negativity which the person couldn't get rid of. The problem is, and imagine yourself in a conflict or imagine a community divided, unlike the first Christian community, the problem is that our heart in a conflict, think of a workplace conflict, loses its independence. Instead of being a healthy, closed system, it is too open. The heart in a conflict becomes like a ghost castle. Ghosts can freely come in and out. Our heart is with broken windows. Ghost trials are taking place in our heart, accusing the one who hurt us. And we are defending our, co uh, our cause in this ghost trial, which are never ending, and our aim is always self-acquittal. The wound is the point. The point is that our heart can belong to the conflict for good. As a consequence, we are entrapped in wounds and self-wounding, and it results in a total reality distortion. Think of legal cases in families when there's a family feud. <laughs> That's the story of human hearts utterly derailed. The important thing is that our heart should become a closed system again when wounds and ghosts can no longer seek, seek in. Easter, after the example of the first Christian community, is an occasion to make our hearts not so much watertight, but conflict-tight. For an independent heart, which truly belongs to us, is resistant to any pain and any reality distortion. And this is what our illustration teaches us. If you catch yourself 
in negative feelings about someone or a situation, it can be politics or an enemy, a difficult person. When you start, when you are about to start those ghost trials, just offer your heart to Jesus. Wounded by a conflict, this is our only option to restore the sanity before it causes more, even irreparable, irreparable harm. So our prayer in the spirit of Easter is simple. And I'm sure that the first Christian community were not terribly different from us. They should have used the prayer like this. O oh Lord, my heart belongs to you, and it belongs to me through you. You can return my heart healed and restored to love again. It means, means that Jesus saves our heart. The risen Lord can save our heart, and it is only him who can save it. This working is very simple. Try it out and test it. Offer all the time your heart to Jesus in a conflict or in a sad situation. Why? Because Jesus, as the Son of God, is undisturbed. No one can cause a storm in her heart, in his heart. No harm can reach him. He is a sovereign Lord. No powers and principalities can reach him. He is safe as are those who belong to him. If we offer ourselves, our hearts to him, to his protection and sustaining power, he will take care of it. And you can see how important it is, particularly in adult age, of this cleansing of the heart, of that, even from a medical point of view, healing the heart, easing the tension around our heart. Jesus extends his peace, the protection he offers us. The conflict does not disappear, but it no longer has power to wound you further. And when we feel enough strength again, we can return to the conflict. We will see the situation more clearly. We can ask for forgiveness, or we can point out the hurt to the other who hurt us. That is why our prayer can continue like this. Lord, teach my heart, breathe again, freely, without any pain, solely through your peace, which is my peace now. Let your heart beat in me, my heart as your extended heart. Originally I gave a title to this meditation called Selfishness Built Around Our Wounds. And this is also very important. Without setting our hearts free again by offering it to Jesus, Literally, we remain obsessed with our own wounds. We cannot step out of ourselves. We can have no distance from the situation. So any anger, any inner plotting against the other, crying over the situation is but a selfish act, pure selfishness when our company is our wound itself. And here comes our Christian responsibility. And I would like to raise the standards high. When we are in a conflict, 
justly or unjustly. Look at our first reaction. We look for allies. We approach someone and share our pain. And that person who is probably equally wounded, wounded by an experience like that, is going to join us. And if the person is caught up in the same conflict, that's a perfect match. Sadly, our consolers are going only to double or triple our pain. Most unfortunate that we, when we involve someone in our conflicts to be on our side, we are inflicting our wounds upon them. And from purely, from a medical point of view, it's a huge responsibility not to share your negativity with others, but share it first always with Jesus. Otherwise, that's the way when heart poisons heart and it can liberate killing energies. Easter is the time when we feel the desire to offer our hearts to the risen Lord. Forgetting about conflicts, not only in a conflict situation, but offering our love and energies in the service of our community and in the service of our relationships. The good news is that Eastertide is powerful. It is full of the special grace of God. And this grace echoes in us. Regardless if you have just failed and lost your heart, just offer it to your God, who is the heart of hearts. When we, as a closing thought, when we are sharing the pain of our heart with Jesus is seemingly the same thing when we share it with others, when we are searching for our lives. But it is totally different. His friendship, his lordship over our hearts is a medical presence in the sense that our heart does not remain or become a pressure cooker in which our wounds are being boiled and are expanding out of control. The sting of the conflict is no longer there. And just imagine, if this is the case in a negative situation, how much more constructive our sharing is with Jesus when we share our joys, when we share our hopes, when we ask someone to pray for us, to walk with us. As our three readings confirm, the Christian worshipping community at its best is a community, is the community of free hearts.